up and give every person here the opportunity to receive personal one-on-one -on -one ministry. And so all across the front, there are going to be prayer ministers. And in just a moment, I'm going to pray. But as I do, if you are here and you are in need of prayer, you need a touch from heaven, you need a miracle in your life, you know that there is something in your life that only God can do, I want to invite you. Find one of these ministers up front because they want to partner with you. They want to join faith with you and believe God for that miracle. The Word of God says this. It says in Psalm 107, it says, Lord, help. They cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. Look, I don't know what help it is that you need. I don't know what healing it is that you need. But the scripture says that when they cried out for help to God, he rescued them. And this morning, whatever help you need in, your, in life, whatever it is that you're going through that you need God to do, let's cry out to Him, and I believe that God is going to meet you right here, right where you're at, and that God is going to move on your behalf. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank You. God, You are so great. There is none like You. And God, we can look at our life and say, God, I don't see a way out. I don't, it seems like no matter where I turn, trouble is all around. But God, we cry out to You, God, for Your help. God, we need your help in our marriage. We need help in our, our physical body. We need help in our finances. We need your help in our life, God. We cry out to you, God. Meet us here. Show up, God. Show up. Show your power in our life that nobody can say that it wasn't anything else but you, God, who did a miracle in our life. Father, we thank you for this. And it's your name we pray. Amen. I mean, if you need prayer this morning, find one of our prayer ministers, and they would love to pray with you.
church we want to tell you this you are so valuable you are so important to us and you know what? we want to have the opportunity to get to know you we want to be able to hear your story we want to learn all of we want to learn about you we want to hear any questions that you have answer any questions that we have or maybe you have some ideas for us we want to be able to hear those too so look if you wouldn't mind I, I want to ask you to do something on the seat right next to you or maybe you're sitting on it right now we have connect cards if you wouldn't mind taking that connect card fill that thing out and turn it in out in the foyer at the table that says, what's next? The people at that table, they would love to be able to answer that question for you. What's next? What is your next step? Where do you go from here? And they'll probably tell you that your first step and the best step that you can take is if you, uh, if that's you, is starting point, which is immediately following service every week. It'll be all the way to your left behind the curtains in one of the music classrooms. Look, let me tell you this. It has been such a huge blessing for me personally. I've been going the last couple weeks, not just because there's food, but because there have been some awesome people that I've gotten a chance to meet and hang out with. It, and look, it is an amazing place. So if that's you, you know you want more personalized one-on-one -on -one ministry, or maybe you're here and you say, you know what, I know I have some gifts and some talents that I want to be able to use to make a difference. Fill out that card, turn it into the table, uh, what's next out in the foyer, and they'll be, t be able to get you connected and get you hooked up with starting point. Amen? Amen. Also, this month, we have two things that I want to let you know about. First of all, tonight at 530, can everybody say tonight? 
tonight at 5.30, we're going to have our first missions trip meeting uh, for our missions trip this summer going to Peru. So, look, we do it every year. It's been so amazing. I got to go, I think, the second year that we went to Peru. It was absolutely amazing. I was actually talking with Pastor Bruce last night about it, just remembering how, uh, how, how amazing that trip was. So if you are interested in going to Peru or maybe just learning a little more information about the trip, you too need to go and see, uh, go to that what's next table out in the foyer, and Pastor Bruce will meet you there immediately following service. He'll get you all the details and make sure you know what you need, uh, uh, where are the meetings at, what you need to do so that you can be at that meeting tonight uh, and learn about that missions trip. Also, coming up in uh, a couple of weeks, we have something that we've participated in as a church for years, something that we've partnered with the city for, which is family-friendly Mardi Gras. This is every year Mardi Gras Day in front of the federal courthouse downtown. And it's an opportunity for families who want to participate or want to have a, you know, have, have a good time during Mardi Gras but don't want to be a part of all the craziness normally associated with Mardi Gras. It's a section where it's alcohol and tobacco free, and we go and just serve our community. We help with all the games and all the food and just everything going on there. So if that's you, if you want to participate or if you would like to uh, go and, and serve, we need your help. And so you too will go to the... What's next table? Hopefully you're seeing a theme. If you have any questions about anything, go to the what's next table. They'll be able to point you in the right direction. But Pastor Bruce will be there as well, getting your name and number so he can uh, give you all the information that you need for family-friendly Mardi Gras. Amen? Amen. Well, as the ushers make their way forward and you prepare your hearts to give this morning, I want to remind you that we provide multiple ways for you to give. If you're like me, you don't always uh, have cash or a checkbook on you, you can give by credit or debit card out in the foyer at one of our giving stations or at our website, which is onechurch.family. Or you can go uh, da and download the Secure Give app on your tablet or smartphone right where you're at and give that way this morning. Let's go to the Word of God. This, this morning, the book of Mark chapter 12, we're going to see a picture of giving in the New Testament, which is really amazing. It says, Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and watched as the crowds dropped in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. Jesus called his disciples to him and I tell you the truth. This poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions. For they gave a tiny part of their surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she had to live on. Two things I want to highlight from this scripture before we give. Number one, don't ever think that the amount that you give is, what is important. You might look and say, well, I don't make tons of money. I don't have a lot to give. It's not that important. No, it is important. Why? Because the second point I want to make, because what's important to God is not the amount, but it's the amount of our heart. It's the, it's the condition of our heart. See, what impressed, what stood out to Jesus was that they had these rich people dropping in big bags of money. And the scripture, other parts of the scripture said they would make a lot of noise when they dropped these big bags in. But this woman gave two small coins, but you know what? She gave everything her had, and it represented a picture that her whole heart belonged to Jesus. It wasn't just a small part of her life. See, Jesus doesn't want just a little bit. He wants everything. And this woman understood that. And so as we give this morning, let's not make a big a, a deal out of the amount that we give, but that are the condition of our heart as we do give. Amen? Won't you lift your offering up to heaven? I'm going to pray and bless, and then we'll receive the word of God this morning. Father, we thank you that as we give this morning, it doesn't matter the dollar amount, but what matters is our heart. And we declare today that our whole heart, our whole life, and yes, all of our money belongs to you. It is yours. That you are the Lord and the master, the ruler over all things, Father. And as we give out of obedience today, we are declaring that over our life. We don't worship, we don't serve money, but we serve the one true and living God. That's our declaration this morning. Father, I pray that you would bless every gift and every giver in this house, and it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much for giving this morning.
Well, welcome everybody. Anybody ready to receive the Word of God this morning? Amen. Why don't you go ahead and stand to your feet, take your Bibles out. I want to act, uh, invite you to interactively follow along with us online. You'll find notes uploaded on, uh, by utilizing the, uh, the app called Version. the Bible app called Version. Amen. So if you're ready to hear the Word of God, why don't you go ahead and lift up that sword. We're going to make a bold declaration of faith this morning. Say it with me in unison, out loud, this is my Bible. There are many like it, but this one is mine. It is God's holy arsenal, and with it I shall make war against the enemy. I'm about to be taught the infallible, incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living word of the ever-living God. My heart is open, my mind is alert, and my spirit is eager to receive. I will never be the same. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I'm so excited about uh, what the Lord is uh, going to be doing over the next three weeks. Last week, we began a new series that I entitled Breaking the Rules. And, uh, and I think all of us uh, kind of like the idea that uh, I can break the rules. The idea, though, however, is whose rules are you going to break? And so this is a different kind of rule breaking. And, and so just to catch everybody up, and we're going to jump into the message quick this morning, but I've got I to gotta, I gotta get everybody on the same page or I'll be like, you'll be missing some stuff. To summarize, last week when we opened up the series, we learned that there are basically two worlds. There are two worlds that are governed by two gods. And not only are there two gods, but they have two uh, uh, systems or two sets of of rules. We learned last week that one is diametrically opposed, directly opposed to the other. Why? Because one is a kingdom light and the other one is a kingdom of darkness. Two different kingdoms, two di- ruled by two different kings, two different sets of rules, right? Two different worlds, two different spheres in which you live in. We learned that one is built upon truth and Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you what free and the other one the kingdom of darkness is built on lies as a matter of fact uh, the devil can't do anything but lie even when it appears that he's quoting scripture he's lying it's just a part of his care his nature he cannot do anything but lie, nothing but slander, nothing but twist, nothing but, but taint the truth. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness by, 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 by the devil for 40 days, for 40 nights, you remember the last three of the great temptations, he quotes scripture. Was he lying about the scripture? Thy word is truth, O God. Listen, the word of God can be truth, but when you put it in the hand or in the mouth of a devil, it's a lie. He perverts it. He twisted it, right? And, of course, Jesus said, hey, bro, you're like all out of context. Because if I'm going to quote my father, I'm going to quote him from Genesis to Revelation. And the revelation of who he is, distinct to his character all the way. We can't pick and choose. So many, so many Christians that I've ran across, I, I mean, it's almost like they play Russian spiritual roulette with their life. Okay, Jesus, Jesus, I need you to speak to me. And then they open up their Bibles and they do, they just spin the pages and wherever it falls, they close their eyes and then then they put their finger on it and say, this is what God's saying to me. It must be. Hey, that's scary. That's scary because listen to me, there are two worlds that we live in right now that are are, are diametrically opposed to one another. And these two worlds are governed by two gods or two kings or at least one that thinks he is. But actually, the scripture, the scripture tells us that Satan is the god of this world and this world system. And this is what we know. Because they are diametrically opposed to one another, we know this. It is impossible. Listen to me this morning. It's impossible to love them both. You can't love God and Satan. You can't love the kingdom of God and yet love the world. I fit, you know, the Bible tells us that Jesus is going to be returning again. The first time he came, he came as the Lamb of God. His feet, his feet were nailed to a cross. 
He stood suspended between heaven and earth for you and me, right? And, 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 and the Bible says the next time we're going to see him, his feet are going to be standing on the, in the clouds. And, 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 and at that moment, the trumpet of heaven is going to sound, and all those that have died in Christ are going to be resurrected. I mean, tombs are going to be busting over, pow, pow, pow. They're going to put on new bodies that never die. And then those that are left, that are living in, this, like in that moment, we're going to be raptured to be with the Lord. And so all of my imperfections, which are they're few, you, you know, all of my, <laughs> I don't know what's up. Well, I said, baby, the older I get, the better looking I'm getting. What's up? I can't, I can hardly, I can't, I look at myself in the mirror and say, hey, hey, no, spirit of pride. You can't. can't. <laughs> spirit of vanity. You know, oh, don't lie, gentlemen, y'all do that too. Y'all stand like, oh, baby, look at that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't lie. Now, women, it's a different story. They'd be like, oh, I wish, I wish. And they're trying to push stuff down. Men push stuff up. You know what I mean? Make me stop. I just lost the spirit. <laughs> it's impossible. Listen to me. It's impossible to love both worlds. And I believe that when that rapture comes and Jesus, the Bible says when that trumpet sounds, the, there are, there are going to be those that profess to be Christians, but they're going to miss it. Do you know why? Because they won't let go of the earth. They love things on this side of eternity more than on the other side of eternity. And they're like, oh, no, no, I can't let this go. And and really, listen to me, it's because their minds have been fractured. It's because their minds have been programmed to believe that joy everlasting is found on this side of eternity. What a great great mistake. So it's impossible. Listen to me. This is what we've learned. It is impossible to learn to, to, to love both of those kingdoms. As a matter of fact, in order to love one, you must hate, despise, or uh, uh, as the Grinch would say, love, right? The other, you can't, uh, some of you guys didn't watch uh, that, but it's a, Christmas favorite around my house, right? And 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 so so and you said, well, well, Pastor, but how can how can you say that? What like 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 what's so at, because Jesus said it. Jesus said it like this in Matthew chapter six, verse uh, verse twenty four. Jesus said, "No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and what loathe, despise." The other, right? There, there, there's no compromising, right? As a matter of fact, and, and this is what we this is basically what we've learned. We've learned, but, but Jesus said this in verse 23. As a matter of fact, this is a, uh, a different translation, but in verse 23 of Matthew chapter six, Jesus said, "But if your vision is poor and you can't see what I'm telling you right now clearly, right? Then your whole body will be full of say it with me." darkness then uh, if then uh, the light within you is darkness how great is that darkness I mean you're deceived you cannot see and to you the lie is a truth and 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 nobody can convince you it takes me about three to five seconds when I when I'll sit with someone uh, they, they say they're seeking counsel, but it'll take me about three to five seconds to figure out whether or not they've already made up their mind. And I, and I know if you've already made up your mind, there ain't nothing that I'm going to say or do to change it. Right? I, I know that. What, listen, if your body, the scripture says, if your vision is poor, and if you don't have clarity about there are two worlds, you love one, hate the other. If you don't, you, you, even the lie in the, in the kingdom of darkness will, will appear to be, you call it a truth. As a matter of fact, we talked about this last week. Uh, we said that when you, are, when you find yourself in a pit of pain, suffering emotionally, mentally, uh, going through a divorce, I was sitting with a friend just this past week in one of, in one of the men's small groups who uh, three years ago lost one of their children. And, and three years, he's still just grieving. They were twins, and he's still grieving. I mean, when you are in that pit of pain and you're hurting so bad, listen to me, the first little glimmer of escape looks like Jesus to you. 
I mean, if it will get me out of this pain, then I'm gone, Jack. See ya. Hasta la vista, as the Terminator would say. He didn't say that. But you know what I mean, right? The idea, and, and, and the thing is, in a moment, even that which you might be alive, because the, we, we learned that the Bible says that Satan masquerades like an angel of what? Light. And, and so folk will think they're doing something that's noble, something that's it's of God. But the truth is, uh, they're making decisions from a place of deep pain. I would like to call it making decisions out of a wounded spirit. And that's why last week we talked about Father God. Uh, If we're going to break free from these lies, these patterns of lies, right? And if we're going to break free from the new norm, because all the way around us in the world, the culture is reinforcing a new lifestyle. And it says, you know, no, really, listen, Jesus is accepting. And Jesus loves everyone. Well, of course Jesus loves everybody, but Jesus doesn't party with you over your sin. He is not rejoicing over that which he knows is destroying you. But the culture, the God of this world continues. I mean, all the way from Washington, all the way to the school administrators. I mean, I, I mean, our kids are being brought up in schools that are, teachers are thinking, you know, uh, uh, the new norm is what the new norm is and it's, it's really just diametrically opposed to Christ. And it, it, listen, here's, here's what we learn. We learn if you're going to be set free from the pattern of thinking in your mind that culture's reinforcing as a new normal, right? They're calling it progress, right? Uh, we're saying it's, it's a step back, right? Here, 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 here's what I know. Stay with me. Stay with me. If that's going to happen, our minds have to be rebooted. Our thinking connectors, neuro connectors, uh, that 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 carve these highways in our thinking. As a matter of fact, they 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 take place when we're young and we're children, or in times of trauma, right at the bottom of your head, called the cerebral cortex. All of a sudden, now there's a pattern of thought. There's a severing, and, and so now there's a there's a carving of what you believe to be a truth. And so every time you encounter uh, 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 whatever adverse situation, your mind routes you and says, this is how it's going to end. So therefore, here's, here, here, here's how I'm going to respond. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, say it with me, so, so is he. So those pathways in our mind, those patterns of thoughts, got to be undone. They've got to be rerouted. Right? I mean, those fractures, that I'm, I mean, we, we got to level the playing field. And this is what we knew because the scripture says, talking about the cultural norm, which isn't the new norm because this is the sinful norm. It's the ancient norm of sin. It took place when Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit in the, in the Garden of Eden. As a matter of fact, Romans, uh, Paul spoke about this in Romans chapter 1 when, when Paul said, claiming to be wise, they instead become what? Say it with me, it's on the screen. Utter, say it with me, fools. See, the, the Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And so God turns them over. I, I love this other translation. Another translation says it, says it like this. It, sa- it says, uh, when they thought, uh, and when they thought in themselves that they were wise, they became, say it with me, what are you doing, right? So, so in, if, 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 if our minds are going to be rebooted, this is what we learned. Chapter 12, verse 2 says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. In, 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 instead, watch this, instead fix your attention on 
God and you'll be changed from the inside out. That's the message translation. The NIV translation says it like this. Do not conform. And, and that's what the, the culture wants to do. It just wants to put you in this pressure. It Pressure could like everybody got to look like this and, and, and everybody got to sound like this. And, no, you got to accept this. And, but don't be conformed to the pattern of this world. Uh, but be what? If your life is going to change, be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind, the patterns of thought. And then you're able to test that and approve that, which is God's perfect and pleasing will. Listen to me. Hear me out. Everybody look at me. I know statistically what I'm looking at today. See, the statistics aren't very, very much different. We talked about this. This is the horrific thing is that statistics in the church aren't a whole lot different from the statistics in the world when it comes to marriage and relationships and so on and so forth and, 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 and sexual purity and so on. And, but, but, but here, listen to what I'm saying. So I know who I'm looking at today. All across this auditorium today, I'm looking at folk today that statistics say that have, their hearts have been broken and through a divorce, some two divorces, and people think, well, the third time is going to be the charge, a, a, a charm. I just got to find the right one. No, 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 listen to me. No, listen to me. Unless your mind is renewed, your life will never be transformed. So what, 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 what's broken in you, you just carry over into the next relationship. Are you guys following me? Right? L listen to me, and here's, here's what I'm telling you. Lies will fracture you. It'll fracture you. Why? Because a fractured mind will lead to a fractured soul, a broken heart. And a fractured soul will lead to a fractured life. And it's a fractured life that's going to lead to a fact, fractured family. It leads to fractured relationships. And, and, and we know that, listen to me, when relationships are good, then life is good. When relationships are good, life is good. Now, now, now listen to me. I don't know uh, if there's anything that will have a greater impact on your relationships than money. Whoa, did he just go there? Yes. I don't know if there's anything that will have a greater impact on your relationship, young ruler. Next week, I'm a, today I'm going to talk to you about the, the man. Next week, I'm going to talk to you about the spirit of mammon. I'm going to dial it in, all right? But today, let's just look at this young man. And let's see if we can find some characteristics of ourselves that we find in this young man. Let me read the scripture. This is Mark, taken out of Mark, uh, the 10th chapter, verses 17 through 30. And the Bible says, as Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, good teacher. What must I do to inherit eternal life? That's kind of important to people that don't want to burn in hell, right? And so uh, Jesus responded and said, why do you call me good? Uh, no, one is, uh, no one is good but one God. You know the commandments, and so Jesus kind of reminds him of uh, the second tablet of the Ten Commandments. And he says, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he said to him, teacher, I've kept all of these from my youth. Uh, you see, I usually don't have a hard time convincing uh, a, a really good sinner that he's a sinner that he needs to get saved. Uh, I have a hard time convincing good people that they are really bad sinners and that they need to be saved. And I think one of the greatest tragedies in all of human history is going to be that he uh, when we get to heaven, we we're going to find out uh, that hell is going to be overpopulated with good people. Good pe they were just good people. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm good. I no, no, listen to me. Let me keep going. Stop. Sorry. And he said, he said to him, teacher, I've keep, kept all these from my youth. Then, verse 21, looking at him, Jesus loved him and said to him, you lack one thing. Go and sell all you have and give it to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then 
Come and follow me. There's a prerequisite here for discipleship. But, verse 22 says, but when he was, but he was stunned at this demand. And he went away grieving because he had many what? Possessions. And Jesus looked around and uh, looked around and said to his disciples, How hard is it for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? But the disciples were what? Astonished. So the young man is stunned. Now disciples are what? Astonished at his words. Again, Jesus said to them, uh, because you didn't get this. Children, how hard or how difficult is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. So they were even more what? Astonished. Like, <laughs> like, wait a minute. I, you know, I thought you were going to make it easier for me. <laughs> They're even more ast- astonished, saying to one another, then who can be saved? And looking at them, Jesus said, with men, it is what? Impossible. But with God, but not with God, because all things are possible with God. Verse 28, and Peter began to tell him, look. Wait, Jesus, look, we left everything and followed you. And Jesus, I assure you, Jesus said, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields or careers or businesses for my sake, listen to me, uh, because of me, And the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now, (laughs) at this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and fields with persecutions. So we're going to be addressing this over the next couple of weeks. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but but we're going to talk about a right prosperity and a wrong prosperity. Uh, and, and a wrong prosperity is this idea I get saved and then I never have to suffer again. I'm just rich and fat and no, 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 no. <laughs> there's a prosperity, but there's still going to be some suffering and eternal life in the age to come. I want to talk about the, let's talk about the man. Let's talk about this man in the story. Uh, the scripture says in verse 7 that a man ran up to Jesus We know three things. One, he's a young man because Matthew chapter 19 verse 22 says he's a young man. We know that he's a ruler. In other words, he's a boss of people. Are you following me? So so he don't like being told what to do. It's kind of like... You know, some people got them tendencies, uh, those especially personalities when you're kind of groomed. Like, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you probably said this or you definitely heard your children say this when they were little. You ain't the boss of me. He's a young ruler or a prince. So he's used to people doing for him. Do you see the picture? So, so, so we know he's a young man. He's a, he's a ruler. And we know, according to Luke, uh, verse 22, we just read that he's wealthy. So therefore, we get the, the identity of this man as, if you take taking notes, the rich young ruler. Here's the second thing I notice in this passage of Scripture is that this rich young ruler, I believe, is sincere in his approach to Jesus. Verse 17 says, he ran up, knelt down before him, and he asked. He's humbling himself. N- number one, uh, rich young rulers don't run to anybody. Much the less, listen to me, go through all of the, uh, the formality of kneeling down and ne- ran up, knelt down, and actually asked him. Good teacher, what must I do to enter uh, or to, to inherit eternal life. And I, all, I believe all of this suggests that this young man was sincere. And here's what I'm trying to tell you. Good intentions will never get you into heaven. You can have the greatest sincerity of your heart. That God, I want to serve you. I want to do right. But that don't get you in. That's not the ticket in. It calls for something a little more than that. 
As a matter of fact, listen to me, you, 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 you would say, uh, uh, but, but, but what, uh, or this was my, my question, what in the world would cause a young man who appears to have everything to appear to be so desperate in this story? I mean, he's, he's, he's young, and when you're old, you're like, oh, if I could be young. And my back and my knees are saying if I could be young, right? Number two, he's a ruler. He's a prince. He's got servants. He's got, and he's rich. So, so not in, you would just think, well, he's a prince, so he's rich. No, no, no. He's not just a prince rich, but he's a rich prince. He, he's more rich than the other princes. You, what in the world would make a rich young man like this, that it looks like he's got everything going for him, uh, run up to Jesus, bow down before him, and just appear to be so desperate? Why is this young man so desperate? Can, 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 I, can I tell you why? Because this rich young ruler isn't so rich. See, there are just some things that money can't buy. I want you to hear me. All the money in the world can't buy you love. All the money in the world might be able to buy you a big party or a long party or lots of parties. But they, not all, but they can never buy or purchase for you eternal life. He was missing something. He's just not as rich as we think he is. So Jesus, he asked you, well, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So, so Jesus rolls out the checklist, right? So, and here's the checklist. The checklist is taken from the second uh, of the two tablets that the Ten Commandments were written on, right? And it, it really has to do with man's relationship with man. And so he asked a question in verse 17 and verse 19. He says, so what must I do to inherit eternal life? In verse 19, Jesus said, uh, you know the commandments. Now, now uh, when we're talking about the commandments that are on the second tablet. And if you want to know what those commandments are focused on, you're taking notes. Those commandments focus on our behavior and our relationships with one another. And some people, if I hear one more prayer, it's just between me and God. I'd be like, you lying devil. That is a lie. Well, each man got to give an account. Yes, you do. You are absolutely right with that. But you're going to have to give an account for your brothers too. They're too tap because covenant is not just between me and God. It's covenant between me and God and you and my brother and my sister and so on and so forth. I mean, all the way back to the Ten Commandments. You want to know the will of God? Here we go. Your relationship with me? Your relationship and how you're going to behave around other people. All the way from the beginning. So he begins to go through the checklist. Now watch this. If you, you're the young man, uh, here we go. You ready? Uh, do not murder. Check. Got it. Never done that. All right. Do not commit adultery. Check. I'm good. I'm not like these other cats. I'm, I'm good. I'm self-controlled. Uh, do not bear false witness. I never stood up in court and lied about somebody. Good, all right? Do not, uh, watch this, do not defraud. Do taking away something from them that doesn't belong to you. To steal is to take away. To defraud is to withhold something that you have that you ought to give to somebody else. Jesus said, if you see your brother in need and you're able to help, but you won't, the love of God is not in you. You're defrauding folk. It's within, it, you know you could help, but you won't. You're withholding. That's the difference. Do not defraud. Check. I ain't withheld anything. Honor your father and mother. Check. Now, I want you, I, I, now I want you to know, I, I believe this young man is a quick learner. So, so he, he, doesn't li- he doesn't lack any intelligence. He's sharp, right? smart because because uh, this time he he doesn't say good teacher he just says in verse 20 teacher teacher I've kept all of these from my what youth so he's a smart learner he's sincere he's able to comprehend he's sharp he's not like what do you mean by that I'm not, that's over my head no he's sharp he understands and immediately, he is actually submitting to the teacher and immediately applying what's being taught. 
So he don't say good teacher. He just says what? Teacher, right? So then Jesus, at this point, uh, Jesus checks him. The young man went through the checklist, but now it's time for Jesus to check him. So how does Jesus check him? He uses that first tablet of the Ten Commandments. Verse 21. Then looking at him. I mean, I want you to see today that Jesus is looking at you. Uh, this ain't a story that's absent. But if you're going to know Jesus as Savior, you're going to have to encounter him today the same way this rich, not so rich young ruler encountered him. Looking at him, Jesus is his intent. He's like, ah, yes. Come on, man. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Let me check you. Come on, man. I got one more. One more. Here we go. Are you ready? Looking at him. And Jesus is looking into your soul today. Come on, Father, all over the room right now. Father, let them, I, I pray the release of vision right now. The release of vision right now. Father, let them see you. Let them see your son, Jesus. I present Jesus to you. Jesus, 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 standing right before you. Just as he stood before this rich young ruler or not so rich young ruler. Do you see him? Come on, can you see him in your mind? Can you see him? Is he there? Now look what happens. Jesus looking at him. Jesus loved him. And I want you to know today that the same Jesus that loved this rich young ruler loves you. And when he's looking at you and he's about to check you, it's not to hurt you. It's, not, it's to free you. Because if, if God's going to heal you, i got to free you from the infection that's poisoning your life. Are you tracking with me? And so that you got to see that he's looking at you today with love. And Jesus said to him, here you go, you lack one thing. Man, you're almost there, bro. I mean, you're right there, you're at the threshold. I mean, you come on, man, just a little, you're there, cross over, cross over. And I want you to know something today. Listen to me carefully today. In the same way that Jesus loved this young man too much to not confront him. I want you to know that Jesus loves you too much to not confront what you are not willing to confront in yourself. Do you understand that? God's doing some business in the house today. He loves you too much to not confront what you will not confront in yourself. And here's the confrontation. One thing you lacked, what was it? Obviously, this young man was possessed by his possessions. And all that stuff, you watch those freak shows on the Travel Channel and there's haunted houses and people appear to be ghosts. No, listen to me. Don't have to look like that, but it looks, it looks exactly like I'm about to tell you what Jesus is confronting here. Oh, Father. You see, the first of the ten commandments on the first the first tablet of the ten commandments they focused on devotion to god the first your behavior and relationships with people but the first tablet had to do with your devotion to god and here we go what we're on what's on that first tablet i'm just gonna give you two i am the lord thy god and no, he wasn't. His money was ruling over him. His money is what fed him. His money is what got him away, uh, afforded him the way of the lifestyle he was living. 
His money afforded him comforts and luxuries. His money provided for him. It provided status for him. It made him who he was, a prince. I am the Lord thy God. And here's the second, uh, uh, or the, the second commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Say it with me. And, can we do it together? One, two, three. And, buzzed. Ah, oh, man. Not true. Because that was a God that was before God. It was called the God of this world. The spirit of mammon. Verse 21, Jesus said, uh, you lack one thing. And here was the test. Go and sell everything you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then you can actually be my disciple and come and follow me. See, one thing, the one, one thing that was required of this man, young man was that he had to divest himself of all his possessions in order to become a disciple of Jesus. And here's what I'm trying to tell everybody. Listen to me. I'm talking about the Lordship of Christ. I'm presenting Jesus as Lord today. To know Jesus as Savior, you must be willing to make him Lord. And in the same way, you got to know him as Savior. God, I need you to help me to do this. What am I trying to tell you today? This is what Jesus was commanding this young man. If you're taking notes, Jesus was saying, in order to become Jesus' disciple, you have to renounce the spirit of mammon. You're going to have the power that it's got over your life. You're going to have to sever it. You got to cut it. Why? Because Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No one can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. 28 years ago, I, or actually, yeah, 28 years ago, I got out of the Marine Corps, and I got to let you know that I love the Marine Corps. Loved it. It was, it's like it was built for me. I mean, if you work hard, you're going places. I loved it. As a matter of fact, just this week, my, I brought my, my youngest son to the recruiter's office. Help us, Jesus. I had, I had that stank eye on that recruiter. Don't be lying to that boy. <laughs> but I love the Marine Corps. I thought I, I wanted to be a lifer. I was going to be a career man, and I was ambitious. I, I wanted to be the commandant of the Marine Corps, so that meant I had to finish school. So I got out to go to school, came, moved, moved back here to Lafayette, and uh, went to, it was then USL, but to go to school. But I had a radical encounter one day, sitting in a church just like many of you are today. And I was confronted. Jesus loved me too much. To not confront in me the thing that I would not confront myself. And I was confronted. And I made a decision that every part of my life was going to be surrendered to him. My career, my marriage, my money. Whatever God's word said. And I wasn't going to try to manipulate this to change, the, change it to meet what I thought. It was over. It was a done deal. Case closed. Just like that. And from that time, I set out. Not that my life would be to make a life for myself on this side of eternity. Not to make money. But to serve in God's army. To be a fisher of men. To sever that. Now this young man in the story is stunned. 
the scripture says. When Jesus confronts him, the Bible says he is stunned. And, and, and verse 22 says it like this, but he was stunned at his what? Demand. The word stunned means he was shocked or he was appalled at this demand. And when I, when I say the word or when the scripture uses the word demand, because obviously this young man was possessed by his possessions. And the Bible says that, that the young man went away grieving. Can I tell you why he went away grieving? He went away grieving because the stronghold was just too strong for him to sever in his life. God, he was almost there. Almost there. Jesus was like, come on, baby, you're there. Come on. It's not, this ain't a big, you know, uh, anchor, big metal cable that's dropping an anchor at sea. Come on, man, you're almost there. You can do it. It's really, it's not, I mean, that money don't provide for you. It's the father that's made this for you. Just, just cut it. But he couldn't do it. The Bible goes on and says, uh, uh, verse 23, that the disciples were astonished. Because Jesus looked around and said, how hard, how extremely difficult it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Verse 24, but the disciples were astonished at his words. And again, he said to them, children, so the second time, it's hard, I know, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. Astonished. Why were the disciples astonished? Can I tell you why? And I'm trying to write our minds that we're not conformed to the God of this world about in the spirit of mammon, how, how we think about money. Let me tell you why. He's astonished, the disciples are astonished because they understood wealth as a sign of God's blessing, God's favor on your life. So what do you mean? I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta cut that? No, you see, when God is, when you're in God's favor, you're just rich. You're just rich. And so the disciples are Really astonished. And Jesus goes on and he says, listen to me, boys. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Let me talk about that camel. In other words, Jesus was saying this. Let's address the elephant in the room today. Let's address the elephant right here in your heart today. All of us. Let's address it. And the scripture goes on and says that, that, that when Jesus says this, verse 26, the disciples were even more astonished, saying, well, who can be saved? That word saved, if you're taking notes, is the Greek word sozo, which means healed, which means made whole. And I know that today there are many folk here today that you're living fractured, you're broken. Your mind and your soul and your, or f your, your life and your family, your relationships, and let me tell you why. Fractured because you are possessed by your possessions. And, 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 and for the record, by the way, you don't have to have a whole lot of money. You don't have to have a whole lot of possessions to be possessed by possessions. It's just not right. And I, I'm here to tell you today that Father wants to free you. He wants to free you. And I want to present Jesus to you this morning. Jesus responded in verse 27, looking at them with what? He loved them. And Jesus said, with men it's impossible, but not with God, because all things are possible with God. I want to present Jesus to you this morning. I want to present the Lordship of Jesus, Jesus as Lord. And I know that we all well, oh, passed. I come to church because can't you just inspire me, make me feel better? Listen, I, God wants you to feel better, but you're broken. There's a heart sickness. There's a mind sickness. There's a pattern of thought that our parents showed us, a spirit of poverty, a 
spirit of mammon. It's, and, and so now we're bound by that. I want to present the lordship of Jesus. And, and here's the picture I had this morning in prayer. All of us would say, Pastor, I want to be what? Healed. Yeah? You want your life healed? You want your relationships healed? Come on, somebody, somebody say, yeah. Yeah, we, I, I think we all want that, right? But some people are sick and they just don't want to go to the doctor. And then some people go to the doctor and when they go to the doctor, the doctor does a diagnosis, right? He says, okay, here's the diagnosis, here's the prognosis, and here, here's, 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 the, here's, here's the health plan for you. Here's the prescription. Take your medicine. Oh, the, l- l- let me pull that infection out of, let me clean up the wound. No, don't touch that. That's my infection. See, if, the, if Jesus, who is referred to as the great physician, if he's going to heal you, then you got to submit to him. you got to submit to him. you got to, okay, check me over. I want to show you a picture of what this looks like. I shared this a little bit earlier this morning. But when I was in prayer, I said, Papa, when I say Papa, I'm talking about Father God. I said, Papa, what are you going to do this morning? And, and I heard Papa say, Bobby, I want, I want you to present Jesus, my son. I want you to present Lord Jesus to the people because I want them healed. And I want their finances healed. I want their relationships healed. I want their finances healed. And then, then, then I, I, I saw the, this vision. It took me all the way back. I was, um, guys, I, I grew up in poverty. Y'all understand that? Poverty. My dad was an alcoholic, drank the money. Now I'm going to draw you a, 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 a specific picture. We lived in this little shotgun house next to my, my aunt, a little country town. And I can remember my mom, she calls my aunt, and I'm probably about four or five years old, calls my aunt, and she's begging her for some milk to feed my little sister. And so she hangs up, and she's got my sister in her arms, and the baby's crying. And then she looks at me, and she says, Bobby, I want you to go next door to your aunt's. And go get some milk. It's dark outside. It's dark. And it's not like, you know, the new developments today where you have these big street lamps and lamps and stuff like that. It's it's dark. And there was a street lamp on the corner, but it didn't put out, it, it wasn't LED lamps. And then we had these big, they had these big trees, you know, so it would block all that. And I had to go through the gate and walk in this little creepy looking area, you know, her house didn't smell the same. And when you're a kid, it's creepy. And I had to go, and I was so scared. And this morning, Father reminded me of that moment. And I saw, like, what, 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 why, why is this memory coming to my, my mind now? And I saw myself walking over to my aunt's and all my fear. But the whole time I saw Jesus, he was walking with me. He was escorting me. Nothing ever happened to me. But see, it's in a moment like that that the spirit of poverty, because I didn't see Jesus. I just thought it was me on my own and I had to go get the milk that my, for my, my little sister because my dad was out drinking and And then it begins to carve the way you think in your mind about money. I'll give you another thought. My mama, I loved her. She's so precious. She was a generous woman. We were poor. My dad passed away when I was real young. She had an eighth grade education. We were brought up on Social Security. And my mama cleaned houses for 
cash. You know, I, I mean, we're poor, y'all. We're poor. But I can remember my, as, as much as I love my mom, and she, she was so generous. I, I, I mean, there was never a stranger she never met, and she'd give you the shirt off of her back if you asked her for it. You. But watch this. But not the church. And in my mind, I always remember growing up. Family always my mom always said, all, the, all, all that priest wanted your money. All he wanted is your money. All he wants is your money. But what happened? There was a programming, you see? Yeah, severing in their thoughts, patterns of thoughts that are carving highways in my mind. And it's right there with the whole spirit of mammon, the spirit of poverty, the spirit of greed, the spirit of lack. All those things sort of take root in your thought process. And then you grow up. And now you're fussing and fighting in the family about money. And you don't know why. Well, this is why. Are you fussing and fighting in the church about money? Because, like, you, you know what I mean? This is why. I present Jesus to you today. I present Jesus to you today. And last I look, demons flee at the mention of his name. So can you just close your eyes right where you're at this morning? Just close your eyes. You don't have to bow your head. You can get wherever you want. If you want to do that, you can do that. But I just want to stop the distractions a little bit. I want to, I want to present Jesus to you, Lord Jesus, to you today. And I want you to ask him some questions. And we're going to pray this out loud. I want you to pray this with me right now. Say, Jesus, am I trying to serve you with a fractured heart? Say that with me. Am I trying to serve you? What does he tell you? I know he speaks. Just hold that. Just ask the Lord this question and, and, and expect for him to speak to you. He'll speak to you in a thought. He'll say yes or no. It'll come. A thought will come. It might speak to you in a vision. It might be some sort of sensation. Let's ask him another question. You ready? Jesus, is my devotion to you fractured by the love of money? ask him, Jesus, is my devotion to you fractured by a love of money? What do you tell you? Just submit. Let's ask him this question. Say, Jesus, is my devotion fractured by a fear of lack? contend with those things that the Lord told you. My encouragement to you is just yield. Now watch this. To Peter. Check. Verse 28. And Peter began to tell Jesus, look, we have left everything and followed you. Here's the reassurance that Jesus gives to you today. Make him the Lord of all of your life. Every part of it. For where a man's heart is, there will his treasure be what? Also. Jesus isn't interested in your money. Pastor Josh, did, we didn't talk about what we were going to talk about today, but Pastor Josh, he said he's interested in your heart. 
And here's Jesus' reassurance to you today. Jesus said, verse 29, I assure you, there is no one who has left houses or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields because of me in the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this time. That's, that's today. No, that's today. And some of you might be like, I lost everything. No, no, you didn't. There's some suffering that you've been through. And it's hard. You might, the enemy will make you feel like you're isolated and alone and nobody wants to help you. I'm trying to tell you that's a devil. This is the voice of Jesus. I reassure you. I've been with you. Just like when I was that little boy walking across the street. I felt all oh, no, 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 I was with you the whole time. And I'm, I'm real. Listen, you're going to receive a hundred times more today. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and fields with what? Person, or, or with suffering. It, you know, it's gonna be, it ain't just all a slippery slope to paradise. And in the age to come, eternal life. Amen. Why don't you stand at your feet? We're gonna pray. Is this some good stuff? All right, all right. We'll see how good it is as to whether or not you come back next week. Because next week we're gonna talk practically how to, how to deal with this stuff. Amen. All right? But today, I just want you to, I just want you to encounter Jesus. And, and maybe, you know, if that exchange didn't happen today, then you, your takeaway is to go seek the Lord. I said, Lord, really? Am I, am I living like, and I ask those questions. Have I given you lordship over my financial life, right? Cool. Why, why, why don't we, why don't we close in prayer this morning? Why don't you lift your hands up to heaven? And I want you to just pray with me right now. Say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me enough to con confront me today. I thank you. I embrace your confrontation. I celebrate the confrontation because I know that you love me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, would you pray with me today? Say, say, Jesus, I choose to follow you and not chase after money for the rest of my life. Forgive me for having done so. Jesus, I ask you, come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Jesus' name. Amen. My friend, if you prayed that prayer with me today, I believe that the Bible is true. Today, your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Right? And you've crossed over from a false concept about what well, Jesus is just to say, no, 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 Jesus is my Lord. <laughs> and he's my Lord. And I believe that today, the angels of God are rejoicing over you today. Why? Because this is all about a heart that God wants to make you whole. He wants to heal you. And He don't want you to continue to live a fractured life separated from Him. I believe that with all of my heart. So if you prayed that prayer with me today, I want to encourage you before you leave this morning, would you reach down by the seat next to you? Maybe you might have moved it, but there was a little connect card. Would you take a moment and fill that out? I don't care if you know all about the Lord, maybe today that you're rededicating your life to the Lord, or, but, but, but the idea is, oh, today, I get it, Pastor, I saw it, today, I prayed that prayer, today, I'm making Jesus the Lord over my life, all of my life, would you fill that out, I would encourage you before you leave, would you take that card, maybe come bring it to one of the, one of these prayer ministers that are standing up front, let them know about your decision, I mean, if it's, I know it might be a little late, and so you might want to run and whatnot, or you have to run because you got an appointment, you got to go to work or whatever the deal might be. But if that's the case, then on the way out, take that card and drop it off to maybe Bruce or someone is supposed to be standing at the what's next table. Uh, 
go see Br- Pastor Bruce is up here. I'm like, well, I thought you had the what's next table, Bruce. <laughs> he don't know what to do. He's like, everybody's looking at me. When everybody stops looking at me, I'm going to leave from here and I'm going to go to the what's next table. Amen. Would you do me a favor, uh, uh, Beth? Would you come? Is, is Jerry with you? Would you come? Would you come? Just come pray. Would you come pray? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cornelius, are you here, Mr. Cornelius? Mr. Cornelius, still here? I know I saw him a little bit earlier. Would you come pray, Mr. Cornelius, if you're here? Yeah. Uh, Tracy, is Ed here with you today? Okay, well, why don't you come? Tracy, you'll stand here. If you listen to me today, uh, if you pray that prayer, make sure you let us know. I'd love to invite you to lunch, and because uh, we can talk about what's the next step. And today's too much, too fast for you. That's all right. Just give us your name, and we'll we'll put you on that right track. Amen. I also want to encourage you today. Look, if you feel like Pastor, uh, man, I need somebody to pray through with me on this thing. Maybe you're kind of limping. You're kind of you're broken. You know this like this like it's sore. Like, when I start talking about this, it becomes, like, as long as I talk about the not-so-rich young ruler, you are okay. But as soon as I start talking about you, it'd be like, oh, 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 oh. Now, l- listen, oh. You see, you're manifesting. Right? Oh, why are you going to go there? Oh. <laughs> it's a spirit. <laughs> the Lord wants you free. Grab one of these guys. Have them pray through with you. Amen. 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 How many guys uh, agree that was a great word this morning? I know I do. Amen. Why don't you lift your hands up to the heavens. I'm going to bless you, dismiss you. If you want to celebrate communion, Brandon and uh, uh, we'll, we'll serve communion all the way to your right. Feel free to do that. Uh, may the amazing grace of Jesus, the extravagant love of the Father, and the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you in ever-increasing measure as you go from this place, listen to me, free from the spirit of mammon, free to live for him who is called Christ, who is your Savior, because today you pronounce him as Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. I love you, everybody. Woman.